What's up guys and welcome to another episode of The Block is Hot. In this episode, I'm going to do a complete starting guide on how to get invested in Cardano NFTs today. I'm gonna go over all of the marketplaces, the wallets, the analytic tools, some of the top projects, the calendars, and pretty much just everything you need to know to get started in 10 minutes or less. Without further ado, let's get into it. First things first, guys, you're going to need a Chrome extension wallet in order to do pretty much everything in the Cardano NFT ecosystem. Now Solana has Phantom, Ethereum has MetaMask, and on Cardano we do have a variety of wallets, but the two most popular ones are going to be Nami and Eternal. I personally recommend getting Nami as your first wallet simply because it's simple, right? Uh, once you download the Chrome extension and have your seed phrase and, you know, store them in a safe place like every single wallet out there, the actual UI is very, very easy for Nami. You have your simple receive button here, which are you're able to send ADA or any single NFT to, you have all of the different tokens that you'll have such as ADA or LQ or anything that you get in the Cardano DeFi ecosystem. And when you click on the little gaming icon here, you'll also be able to see all of the different NFTs that are currently in your wallet. Now, one of the things that's cool about Cardano in general is you can actually send multiple NFTs all in one transaction and even send multiple coins or tokens all in one transaction as well. All you have to do is select a specific address or paste an address, and then you literally can click plus assets here, and you can send multiple assets all within this one transaction, which is really nice for you know just ease of use and you know sending a bunch of NFTs at the same time. Eternal is probably the second most used wallet on the Cardano ecosystem, and it does have a lot more tools and a lot more customization than Nami does, but because of that, it is a little bit more complicated to get started Started. And when you try to mint different NFTs, I do find it to be a little bit slower to click through all the different UI, but a lot of people do like this wallet. So maybe give it a shot once you're comfortable with Nami. Once you guys have your wallet set up and funded, you're probably wondering where the heck do I actually buy these NFTs? What's like the Magic Eden or the OpenSea of Cardano? And the answer guys is JPEG Store. JPEG Store accounts for over 95% of the volume of CNFTs. And the reason is, is it was the the first marketplace on Cardano that actually allowed for smart contracts. And that's why JPEG store really blew up. Now, JPEG store is pretty easy to use. It shows some of the top 12 volume over the last 24 hours, seven days, 30 days in all time. You can see some of the different projects that are about to launch on their launch pad that they recently created. And you can also see all of the different top collections by overall volume in our ecosystem. Now, when you actually wanna buy or sell something, you can simply click on that NFT. You get a quick synopsis of all of their different social media links, the amount of NFTs they have, the amount of owners of those NFTs, the floor price in ADA. You even get the policy ID to make sure that this is actually the real NFT. But to be honest with you guys on Cardano, uh, very, very rarely do you not see the actual real NFT, unlike Solana from my experience. You can also see that this project is verified with that policy ID to JPEG store. And with this little crown thing, you can see the amount of royalties. When you actually want to buy an NFT, you can scroll through, click on the one that you want to buy. You can check out the owner of this specific NFT and the different NFTs they hold, or you can simply send them an offer for that NFT or buy it now. You can also get a little bit of information about the different traits this specific NFT has, and you can even look at the trading history to see all the buys and sells for that specific NFT. Moving on to analytics and overall rarity for specific NFTs, the best site by far is none other than CNFT Jungle. I live and breathe on CNFT Jungle because it literally gives you all of the information you need about the CNFT space, such as different projects that are releasing, some of the data, the rarities, et cetera, et cetera. As you scroll down, guys, you can see some of the terms that have been being searched a lot in the past 24 hours. You can see volume trending, largest floor changes, some top sales, and you're actually able to divide uh, the collection data 
data by different time frames, such as minutes, hours, days, weeks, all time. And you can see the different floor price movements, the amount of sales that have been happening, the floor trend, the amount of NFTs listed. And what's really cool is you can actually click on these different NFTs and you can get more data. So for example, 2% of Dirtbirds are listed with only 189 for sale. You can see all of their volume up top here. And when you click on the NFTs on CNFT Jungle, you're able to get a further breakdown of their rarity. So you can see all of the different trades they have, the specific link to check it out on pool.pm, which I'll talk about in a little bit, as well as all of the floors for the different trades it has. So very, very useful tool. They also have the calendar page where you can see some of the upcoming projects happening in the Cardano ecosystem. So highly recommend bookmarking this site. Another great analytics tool or platform to use is OpenCNFT. OpenCNFT allows you to track the overall volume happening in the market based on the time period that you select. And it also allows you to go up here to analytics, go to market data, and be able to see all of the market data in the NFT space currently. You can do this by 24 hours, by seven days, by 30 days, by all of time. And you can even see some additional detail such as JPEG store, our different marketplace volume, our, our dominance, as well as some of the different collections. Now what's really cool too guys is you can go to their main open CNFT page and click on a specific project to get more details as well. So let's say you wanted to learn a little bit more about Ape Society. You can click on this, you can check out the activity, you can see the different analytics. And my favorite tool that OpenCNFT has is it actually shows the wallets of people holding these different NFTs. So for example, someone has 284 of these Ape Society and I can click on their wallet, go to pool.pm, which I promise I'll cover in a little bit, and actually see all of the different NFTs that this guy owns, as well as the amount of ADA they have. The last site that I wanna bring up here when it comes to different rarity and just additional analytics is going to be CNFT tools. Now I showed earlier that CNFT Jungle had different rarity ranks for the different collections and different NFTs. But the real rarity rank is actually going to be CNFT tools. CNFT tools is what projects submit to when it comes to their rarity percentages, whereas CNFT Jungle more so does an algorithm. So when a project first launches, they might not actually be on CNFT tools yet, and that's where CNFT Jungle will give you a rough estimate of what the rarity of that NFT is. But CNFT tools is going to be the main one. Now, one of the projects I'm looking at right now is Clay Nation, and you can actually look for specific traits in the project or different filters such as the price or rank when you're looking to buy or sell an NFT. And one thing that's cool is you can click on a specific NFT that you have or that you're interested in buying, and you can see all of their different traits as well as their overall rank, which this is the fourth most rare Clay Nation. And one thing that's really cool about this too, guys, is not only can you see the different percentages, not only can you see if it's listed on JPEG store to buy it and have a link to it, but you can also see the floors for every single trait out there. So if you buy one of your own NFTs or if you mint an NFT, you can actually look at the different trait floors and get a better idea of how valuable that specific NFT is, but CNFT Jungle can do that as well. Now that some of those analytic tools are out of the way, how do you actually find these different projects that are minting? Well guys, CNFT Calendar is going to have the most amount of posts in my opinion. This is where a lot of projects post to first and it generally has pretty much every project that's releasing or at least the majority of them. CNFT Tools is also another great site where you can go to their drops calendar in the top left and see some of the drops that are coming up. For example, Mysterious Maui Association was actually dropping today and then once again CNFT NFT jungle had that calendar that I showed you guys earlier. The next thing that I want to show you guys is how exactly you look at a specific wallet's holdings or track some of the different transactions happening in the blockchain. One of your big friends is going to be pool.pm. Pool.pm is great if you want to look at a specific wallet and see what NFTs or assets they're holding. And you can simply
simply paste that wallet address in here and see their different holdings. You can even look at a specific policy ID and look at all of their NFTs under that policy ID, further click on a specific one, and now you can see the different attributes or the different metadata for that project. Another really great thing about pool.pm is it allows you to stake to any single stake pool using your NAMI wallet or using your eternal wallet. All you have to do guys is look up a specific stake pool. I'm looking up BIG because it's actually the best stake pool out there. Cough, cough, you should totally stake. I'm totally not operating this stake pool, cough, cough. Uh, but yeah, you're actually able to look up a specific stake pool. In this situation, it's Block Investment Group and you can hit this join button over here on the right hand side called delegate. Once that comes up, you'll be able to see your wallet that you wanna delegate with. For example, I have NAMI and then it's simply a transaction and I can start staking. Now this is the best feature in my opinion when it comes to Cardano. When you stake your cryptocurrency, it does not leave your wallet. You can still spend that. There is no downside at all. So if you're not currently staking, start staking because you're gonna get an average of 4.5% on your ADA every year. And if ADA goes up a lot in price, you're actually making a lot more than 4.5%. Now what's really cool is if you have 2000 ADA in your wallet, it'll automatically stake all 2000 of that ADA. And let's say I go spend 100 ADA on an NFT and have 1900 ADA, now it's automatically staking 1900 ADA. It's as easy as that guys, and it's one of the coolest things on Cardano because you're literally able to buy and sell NFTs while at the same time making roughly 4.5% over the course of the year. And on top of that, there's different stake pools out there that'll even give you a different token on top of getting that Cardano called ISPOs. But that's a whole other that's a whole other video. Another really useful site, which is kind of the ether scan of Cardano, is none other than Cardano Scan. This is where you can literally look at every single transaction happening on the chain. And this is where you can look up a specifically a specific policy ID such as this project that is minting today. You can copy it, search that policy ID, you can look at transactions, you can see how many are minted right now, who's holding that project. Honestly, just a really great tool if you wanna dive into transactions and maybe track some money flow. Back to the staking side of things, I did wanna bring up one more tool that you can use instead of just using pool.pm and that's ADA Pools. ADA Pools is a site that gives you a little bit more information about all these different stake pools. You can go to their homepage and get more information as well and you can see the different amounts of return on your ADA for each of those pools. Now, I made a whole entire guide on stake pools and what to look for, uh, including the margin and the active stake and the return on ADA and all that stuff. So if you're more interested in stake pools, check out that video. Next thing that I wanted to show is tap tools. Now tap tools is actually how you chart or how you keep track of some of these different coins happening on the ecosystem. And I know that this is mostly a Cardano NFT video, but a lot of Cardano NFTs are starting to have their own utility tokens. And with that, you need to be able to track these different tokens tokens and their prices and tap tools in my opinion is the best site to do so. They actually just recently upgraded their whole entire UI and I think it looks clean and you can see the different market cap as well as some of the pricing data for the different tokens that are coming out. One of the big tokens in the space right now when it comes to the NFT scene is Clay Token. I'm actually very bullish on Clay Token, but this just allows you to get a bigger breakdown of all of the different trending data charts. It's pretty much your DEX tool of the Cardano space. Speaking of of all of these different tokens, where exactly do you buy and sell these tokens? Because you're not gonna be able to buy these on centralized exchanges. Well guys, my personal favorite right now is Muesli Swap. Muesli Swap is actually a DEX aggregator. So it searches all the different DEXs out there and tries to find the best price for you. And that's actually where it'll execute its order. Another very popular site right now when it comes to buying and selling uh, these different tokens, as well as just being able to yield farm because Muesli Swap doesn't have it yet, is MinSwap. Swap. I think the most liquidity is actually on MinSwap, the most buys and sells. And this is where you can get into some of these tokens and some of the yield farm and do some of these different Insta swaps. We also have Sunday Swap and Wing Riders right now, as well as a lot of other DEXs that are coming soon, such as Maladex that supposedly fixed in permanent loss, which is a huge deal if you know anything about DeFi. You guys pretty much know the bulk of information that you need to know now when it comes to getting started in the Cardano NFT ecosystem. However, 
However, there's a couple more tools and resources that I personally use that I think are worth letting you guys know in this video. The first one is going to be Lending Pond. Lending Pond is a site where you can actually lend ADA or borrow ADA on your different CNFTs. And they're actually able to do a pretty big upgrade soon here where you're actually able to get all these additional functions uh, in their V2, which is pretty exciting. And uh, maybe just a little bit of alpha from anyone from Jelly Cubes. We might be making our own uh, lending platform soon, uh, but it's gonna be a little bit different from how Lending Pond does things. Another useful tool that I wanted to show you guys is Carta Hub. Now, one of the cool things, once again, about Cardano NFTs is you can actually send a lot of NFTs in one transaction, and you can also send ADA to a lot of different wallets in one transaction. So if you're someone that has a lot of wallets or are used to having a lot of wallets, if you're trying to mint a bunch of stuff, whatever the case is, Carta Hub is a really great tool. Literally, all you have to do, guys, is post a specific address. I know this is a policy idea, not an address. Put a comma and then put an ADA amount, and you can literally have 30, 40, 50 of these and you can copy and paste your addresses from all of your wallets, send a different amount of ADA to each one, and it'll be able to execute all of that in just one transaction. So this is a super helpful tool if you're someone that's scaled up with a lot of different wallets. Another really useful tool that I wanted to show here too is none other than ADA Handles. Now ADA Handles is kind of like the ENS, I believe, of Ethereum, and pretty much you're able to buy these ADA Handles, guys. They're NFTs. You can pick a different amount of characters, and this can now be your new Cardano address. So instead of trying to memorize a whole entire Cardano address, you can literally do dollar sign BIG or dollar sign jelly cubes, right? And now all of a sudden, any single anyone can send you ADA to that address rather than you needing to tell them, hey, here's my complicated long password that I have to copy and paste. So really, really useful to get. They're like 10 ADA or something like that. So if you're getting started in this space, go snag an ADA handle. It is going to make your life so much easier. One of the things that I'm realizing in this video is that there is no way that I was gonna be able to cover all this in 10 minutes, but instead of trying to cram everything in 10 minutes, I really wanted to give you guys all the information that you needed. So just sorry that it's taking a little bit longer. I know I'm gonna get some FUD in the comments, but regardless, now, one of the things that I wanna cover in this video is just some of the top collections and just some of the base knowledge on some of the projects that you need to know. Uh, so you're not completely lost when you're looking at these different projects. So this is gonna be kind of rapid fire and I'm not gonna go over all of them, but I'm gonna go over some of the main ones. Space Buds. Space Buds was the first 10,000 PFP collection on the Cardano ecosystem. It's kind of like your crypto punks of Cardano. Now Space Buds have always been the highest floor, but recently there has been a little bit of FUD with Space Buds because the art ended up being copied. And this is no fault from Alessandro that has done a ton of stuff in the space. He's the founder of this project. He's the founder of NAMI and a ton of other useful tools in the Cardano space. But yeah, they're kind of going through a whole entire rebranding right now, but this is the biggest project by overall volume. Next project here is Pavia. It's kind of like a metaverse project, Decentraland type deal. They've had a ton of different volume. They've been building some stuff for a while, but in my opinion, they've been building for a little too long now. Uh, but next thing here is Clay Nation. Clay Nation, in my opinion, is the best project in the Cardano NFT ecosystem. I hope that Jelly Cubes, which is my project, uh, will be that project or up there one day. Uh, but Clay Nation is definitely the top project for now. They have an incredible community, an incredible following. All their owners are docs. It's run, uh, the two founders are these two chicks, pretty cool chicks. They've done different collabs with Snoop Dogg. Uh, and really guys, if you're looking for the safest play in my opinion, or kind of like the board ape of Cardano, this is going to be your pick. Boss Cat Rocket Club. Now, Boss Cat Rocket Club is a project that absolutely blew up in the beginning, guys, especially in January and February, and they have some of the hardest core community members as well. Now, there's a, a very polarized, polarizing effect with Boss Cats. Some people love them, some people hate them. There isn't a lot of in-between, but they've been in their boring phase for a while, and I really do think that they've been developing a lot of stuff, such as their Boss Planet Metaverse, so it's probably an, uh, a project 
project to keep your eye on. Next thing here, Chilled Kongs. Now there has been some drama with Chilled Kongs recently, but this is a project that not only has good art and a good PFP, but it's a project that's been around for a while and does have a strong community. Their owners were recently found to be part of another project that was kind of a rug in all honesty, guys. So there's a little bit of drama coming from that now, but this is a project that is releasing their Magic Kongs soon and does have a strong community and is an OG in the space. Next project here is Ape Society. I, I like Ape Society a lot. If I was to do a one-two punch right now, it would probably be Clay Nation and Ape Society. Ape Society, they not only look clean, but they have been building a lot of stuff and they have a very strong community. So if you're looking for another safe play, such as Clay Nation, this is definitely a project that I'd consider a blue chip. These Boss Cat Rocket parts are part of, are part of Boss Cat's ecosystem. You can build different rockets that have different whitelists and different utilities. Now, Pitches at Clay Nation is going to be the metaverse of Clay Nation, and they're doing a lot of different stuff with that. Next thing here that I wanted to do was Cornucopias. Now, Cornucopias, in my opinion, is also another major blue chip in the space. They have been doing a lot of sales and raising a lot of ADA, but this team is doxxed. It's a big team. They're building different games. It's gonna be a large metaverse. They have a, a, a decent amount of different partnerships. And I'll tell you what, man, their owners, Rob and Josh, they grind, and I really respect these guys. You can actually start staking your land if you're staked to their stake pool and get their Kopi token which their Kopi token has done fairly well. And uh, yeah, definitely a project to keep your eyes on. They have a couple different vehicles that have been sold. They just recently did their custom dome sale, which is gonna be more of the business to business side of things. And yeah, I, I, I like Cornucopias. It's a project you can trust, but there are a lot of NFTs in there right now. Next thing here is Dead Pixels. Dead Pixels is a really cool project. They're making this whole entire Pixel Wars game uh, that should be coming out relatively soon. They have been going down a decent amount out recently uh, but I do know that their owner is is working really hard on the project and if they're able to make their whole pixel wars game it'd be a really great way for people that own these dead pixels to make some money boss planet is obviously uh, the metaverse of boss cat rocket club then you have Yumi Universe. They're trying to create the Pokemon of the Cardano ecosystem. And this is once again, an OG project with a strong community and their characters look pretty cool. They also have their Yumi token that you can get from staking. And this Yumi token, in my opinion, has had just a tremendous amount of utility when it comes to minting different projects. And when they make their actual game or whenever that ends up coming out, uh, I could see that token doing fairly well. Clay Nation x Good Charlotte is just a collab with Clay Nation. Dead Rabbit Resurrection Society is a project that has really cool art. It's a project that didn't release that long ago, in my opinion, maybe like four or five months ago, if that. Uh, but they have some really cool art. They have a strong community and they do a lot of different like treasure hunts, like geonode hunts in real life. Uh, and they have a lot of different stuff planned. So definitely a project to pay attention to. I don't know if I consider it a blue chip yet, but if it's not a blue chip yet, it's pretty damn close to being that. Aqua Farm Farmers is a project that gives you additional staking rewards when it comes to LQ or liquid finance, which is the largest market cap Cardano DeFi coin out there right now. Uh, and you're going to be able to do like borrowing and lending and all of that sort of stuff with their protocol. These just give you an additional reward for that. Zombie Chains OG project, more of an art and community focused project, but they do have some stuff coming out soon where they have like this whole trading card thing and you can, you know, kind of battle your zombies versus their hunters and it will ch it, depending on what happens, it could change how your zombie or your hunter looks. Pretty cool about that. I haven't dived super, super into them recently, so I don't want to misspeak here. Cabins by Ape Society is the metaverse project of Ape Society. You're going to be able to get their society token, set up these frames with society, frame your NFTs, get more society token, that sort of stuff. And they also have a lot of stuff planned that they haven't spoken about yet. And just to do a couple more here, we have Mallard Order, which is another project that released maybe two months ago. Uh, they're kind of into the whole cryptic thing. This is a pretty new project, uh, but they've been showing a lot of strong support, honestly. Um, this bubble jet is from Cornucopias. It's one of their vehicles that you can stake and will have in-game playability. Disco Solaris is really an art and community focused project, but 
They've honestly been doing some different partnerships and I wouldn't be surprised if they have some pretty cool stuff coming up soon. I personally don't have any. Now, I don't really wanna go over too many other projects here. I mean, Goat Tribe is an OG. They have a whole minting platform and kind of like an investment vibe to it as well. You have, you know, Mandrills that are building out their drill city. Makosi has been building for a long time too. They're building a whole entire Makosi planet game, which is kind of like a cute pet game. Uh, and they've sold their land for it. And honestly, they have a super strong community. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's some other ones on here. I can do a whole entire video if you guys want me to do a video breakdown of every single one of these projects. Cause I do have a, I do have some knowledge about a, a decent amount of these projects. Uh, but the last one that I wanted to bring up is Jelly Cubes, which is our project and jelly cubes are honestly really cute and fun and uh, it gets you alpha access into the block investment group and you know we cover a lot of different information and and go over different mints and it's honestly a great resource if you're getting started in a non-biased opinion and we also have a lot of different stuff we're building so uh yeah pretty exciting now that pretty much wraps up all the information that you need when it comes to investing in the cardano ecosystem you have your nami and eternal wallets you have cnft jungle open cnft and cnft tools as a really great way to get your different rarities as well as analytics in the space. You have pool.pm and Cardano scan in order to track some of these different transactions. You have the calendars on CNFT tools as well as CNFT jungle as well as CNFT calendar. And then you also have some of those different decentralized exchanges and other tools such as the lending pond platform for lending uh, that I covered in the video. But yeah, I hope that this really helped you guys out. I'm actually about to make a video tomorrow uh, uh, that is going to go over why I think people from other chains should invest in Cardano NFTs. I know there's been a lot of buzz recently from uh, guys from Ethereum, like the Sappy Seal guy, and you have uh, you know some people from Solana starting to talk about CNFTs. So I'm gonna go over my personal reason why I've delved into the Cardano space so much. I literally started my own project on Cardano. I have my own stake pool on Cardano. I make content on Cardano. I live on this blockchain and I'm one of the few people that actually were on Ethereum and Solana and Binance and uh, Polygon and AVAX and Phantom. Like I've been around to a lot of different blockchains and there's a reason I'm so bullish on CNFTs or Cardano NFTs. But yeah, if you're interested in watching that video where I break down my reasoning behind it, uh, make sure to subscribe because I'm hoping I can get that video out tomorrow. But yeah, hope this helped you guys and uh, have a good one.